Hey guys, we are back out here at Riverwalk Park today in Columbia, Tennessee, and we are doing a part two um, structured walking video. And this is honestly exactly how I start conditioning um, with the e collar. And I use two different e collar systems. One is the Dogtra ARC e collar, um, and you can order that through us. You can order it through the tools and equipment section on our website. You can order that through Amazon directly. Um, if you do, use our affiliate link, and we'll get like. 15 cents or whatever I'm not really sure um, but the reason that I wanted to show this today is I think that when someone hears e-collar that it's really important they understand what it is that we're actually using on the dog and and using to communicate with them because that's really what it is is a communication device it's not about shocking the dog it's not about vibrating until compliance or or shocking until compliance it's honestly something that we will teach a dog the behavior to begin with. So this isn't where we're teaching the dog heel through the e-collar. We're not teaching the dog sit through the e-collar. We're not teaching the dog down through the e-collar. We've taught them all of those things already. They know sit, down, place, heel, um, easy to, to slow down. They know break, they know let's go. Um, I don't ever, I almost never say heel on a structured walk. I usually just say let's go. Um, heel is like competition heel, right? Now, is this position heel? Like if I'm calling the dog into me and they're on the way and I want to swirl them into a heel, totally, I'll do that. But I think it's important that people understand we're not teaching the dog the behaviors through the e-collar. We're layering the understanding that they already have with a little bit of leash pressure and then with a little bit of e-collar, all right? So all that that does is it creates a pairing or a, um, a little link that says to the dog, okay, I have, for example, when we did the, the structured walking exercise, when I come to a stop on that line, that my job is to sit, right? So all I'm gonna do is the same exact thing that I've been doing, but as I come to the sit, I'm gonna start tapping, excuse me, as I come to a stop. So I'll come to the stop, tap, tap, tap. And usually the dog gets it instantly. Um, and again, the goal is not to create this super aversive stimulation where they're like, ah, ah, you know, like it's literally just like the tap. It's like tapping on someone's shoulder. So that being said, when you are doing any sort of work with the e-collar, you've got to make sure that you're testing that dog's working level in the environment that you're going to be working them, which means that at home, it may have been, you know, a two or a three or a four. And then as you go out into public with high distractions, you'll notice that that, that working level is gonna uh, eke up a little bit. Um, that's very normal, obviously, because the, the environment's probably gonna change how the dog receives information a lot. So they've got all this other stuff coming in. You may have to turn it up a little bit just to cut through that. Um, and it's important as a handler to know what their typical baseline is without a whole lot of distractions, maybe indoors, and then starting this um, conditioning process with not a whole lot of distractions going on. So um, uh, we have already done that. We actually have done a couple conditioning ses sessions. Uh, I, I keep it five to 10 minutes at a time. And um, once I've done those conditioning sessions, then we will go and we'll take it out in public and we'll take those same principles and apply them in public. So what I'm going to do is pull her really quick and I'm going to do a quick warm up drill um, with her. And then I'm going to pair this um, simulation with the exact same video. If you go back and watch the three phases of structured walking with Ender, um, same day, same dog. The only difference is now I have a stain on my shirt because I went and ate lunch. Um, so I'm going to go pull her really quick and we're going to get started. All right, guys, so I just spent literally probably 30 seconds testing her baseline really quick. And uh, if you want to know all the ins and outs to the different remotes and systems that we use, there's another video that I will be posting um, that you can go on and you can see the differences between the mini educator series of collars versus the Dogtra ARC. And Dogtra is an excellent brand. I've been using them now since the beginning. Um, wow, it's been a long time. I know that we've personally had a partnership with them for about five years, um, but I've been using them for about 10. And I would say probably the best quality um, affordable collar on the market would be the Dogtra ARC and the Mini Educator. This one is from a different company that someone donated to the rescue, and I'm gonna go ahead and sell it to Ender's parents at a pretty big discount because um, she's a rescue. She's also gonna be a therapy dog. So all we're doing today is we're gonna layer this e-collar stimulation 
with all of the stuff that we've already done in the structured walking exercise. And she has done this already a couple times before, so we're gonna keep this nice and short. Um, again, I'm gonna walk back through all of the phases really quick so that you guys can kind of refresh your memory. And in the beginning, remember that we keep the leash long for phase one. And I'm gonna just put my thumb in that loop right there and grab both sides, okay? So this right here is the proper leash grip that I want you guys using because that way I can pop back, I can give pressure up if I need to. Um, at the same time, it also, when I'm relaxing my arm, I can swap between hands if I need to very easily. This right here is gonna get you in trouble, all right? Now, if you're a uh, dog walker for the animal shelter and they tell you to walk that way, walk that way, all right? But if you're walking your own personal pet dog, I strongly recommend doing a um, thumb through the loop there and then grab both sides, all right? So phase one. In phase one, I wanna make sure that she's hitting the end of that leash on her own. She's creating her own correction. Therefore, she's realizing, I don't really like that, so I'm gonna stop doing it, all right? So phase one, and a lot of times people ask me, so how often do you do this? And I'll usually do it until the dog stops pulling as soon as we start the walk. Like, if they're not pulling, if they're not focusing on every other thing, then I'll just keep, I'll just walk, you know? I'll just say, let's go, and we'll start walking. And basically, our walk starts as soon as that leash is on. All right, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and start the turnabouts really quick with the leash long in phase one, and I'm gonna use that same cue. Let's go. Good. Let's go, tap, tap. So anytime that I feel tension on the leash, let's go. Good, nothing at all. Good girl. Let's go, tap. Good. Good, very nice. Let's go. Yes, good girl. Very nice. Let's go. Good girl. Good. Very good. That was three in a row. And as I come to a stop, I'm going to just tap a couple times. Very nice. And I'll pay you if you will take it. <laughs> good girl. Very soft. Such a good girl. Come here. And I'm going to tap again right there. Good. Very nice. All right. So the system that I use um, just to keep the communication nice and strong with the dog is I'm gonna, no. Good girl, very nice. So I'm gonna use some electric taps to slow the dog down. I'm also gonna use electric taps to put the dog into a sit. And the difference between the two is that if I'm tapping that electric, then I want the dog slowing down or sitting down, all right? If we're moving, obviously they can't sit down because they're moving, so they know to slow down. It's also really gonna be whatever I pair it with. So again, um, I kept the leash long on the outsides of those turns. If I felt any sort of tension, I just gave a couple of taps. Notice she's very happy. She's putting lots of relevance on me, even though there's a lot going on around here, okay? Step two is, yes, good girl. Step two is the same exact thing, but we're gonna fold the leash in half, so short leash here, and I'm just gonna say, let's go. Good, no taps required. Let's go, tap, tap. Good. Let's go. Little tap there. Good girl. Let's go. Tap. And I'm trying to vocalize whenever I'm doing something. Let's go. Tap, tap, tap. Good girl. Come on. Good, let's go. Very nice, very nice. And then as I come to a stop again, just a slight bit of tension. Ooh, too much, huh? All right, I want you to, I want to go back and see that. So if you have, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to go back and watch that. That's the exact moment that you're going to realize that that baseline was a little, set a little bit too high, okay? So I went from a seven down to a four. Perfect. That's about right. I, I want her acknowledging that the stem is there, but not doing that head jerk that she did. So I immediately move it down, all right? Which is very, very important that you constantly are in tune with where do I need to be on my remote, all right? So again, I went down to a four, and that's a four out of 100, all right? So very, very subtle, very, very low. And we're gonna skip to phase three, all right? In phase three, I'm turning into the dog, and I'm also giving my own active correction. So if I need to slow the dog down, then I'm gonna give a little pressure backwards, and I'm gonna tap that electric as I step into the dog, okay? So I'll say, let's go. Good, very nice. Good job. Let's go, tap. Good, just a nice light little tap there. Tap, let's go. Tap, slow her down a little bit. 
Now I can actually go the distance. Tap, let's go. Good, very nice. And we'll do a stop right here. Yes, very nice. Very good. Let's see if you'll take some food. Nope, that's okay. Let's go. Good, nothing. Good, a couple electric taps, okay? Very good. You good? Want some? You just want some sleaze. Yes, a good girl. Some little squishies. Good girl. All right. So again, notice that she's not shut down. She's not shy. She's not scared. She's not obeying because she's afraid that she'll get corrected. All right. She's obeying because it's, she's been trained to obey. Right. She's listening because she's been trained to listen. She's been paid to listen. So when I drop that leash right there, she should understand that does not mean anything at all. All right. That is not information. When I pick the leash up, that is when I'm giving her information. So in her state of mind, it should be such that when I drop the leash, she actually becomes more stationary. And what will typically happen is if I ignore the dog and I just hold down that electric as I drop that leash, a lot of times the dog will down on their own. It depends on the dog. Um, that's the stimulation type and tactic that I typically use is I'll hold that electric until the dog's already down, but I pair that with a little bit of luring, a little bit of food work. So if shaping is the building of behaviors, then conditioning would be the building of behaviors as we pair it with a tool, with pressure, um, with luring, with word association. So. <clears throat> And then we can go back and we can proof, right? So we, we educate the dog, we show them when we expect them to behave that way, and then we go back and enforce, all right? So educate, expect, enforce. That's the order that it should go in, all right? Again, that was phase three, all very simple, okay? One caveat here, okay? I'm gonna just kind of turn and look at her really quick. Look at that baby. Look at that good girl. Yes, you're so pretty. Good girl. All right, so notice something. I didn't tell her to sit and she sat. I didn't tell her to stay and she's staying. All right, and her here. Yes, good girl. Very nice, okay? All that was there was just a, a tap on that vibration just briefly. I'm talking a fraction of a second, okay? So I'm gonna do that again. Good girl. And I'm tapping on that electric until she sits. Good, very nice. Good job. Very nice. All right. Standing there like a statue, like such a good girl. I'm going to go a little bit further this time. Good. And a little tiny vibration. Ender here. Yes. Good. Good girl. Yes. Good job. And I'll pair with touch. Very nice. Good girl. Oh, you're a love. Oh, you want belly rubs, don't you? I'm actually gonna walk away from that. So that way she can stay in that down. We're just gonna give her a second. Okay, you wanna come over here? Good girl. I didn't send you in it, so I'm not mad that you're breaking it. <laughs> yeah. Good, she loves this. I don't know what it is about the, the um, that leash on the back of her foot. Her parents were saying that that's kind of like a weird trigger for her. Sit. So I'm tapping that electric. I'm gonna get a little closer here. Sit. Yes, good. Notice that spatial pressure, the space between us says a lot about what I'm asking her to do. She's doing really great. Good girl. End her here. Tap, tap, tap. Come here. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Yes, good girl. So as soon as I said that, yes, I stopped that tapping. You are so goofy and you love this game, don't you? Yes. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. Yes. Okay. Good. You want to come with me? All right. I'm just going to move around for a second. Just kind of see what she does. Good girl. I'm not doing anything on the e-collar. This is just bond. Just working on our connection. Come on. Ender here. Yeah, good girl. That's a good girl. Yes, good girl. That was so good. Oh, goodness. That was quite the recall. All right. So all I'm doing there is I give the recall word here. 
I hold that vibration until the dog starts to come to me and then I go, yes, good. Or I say good and then I mark and reward them when they get to me. So I usually use good as a non-reward marker. So I'll say, under here. Yes, good girl. That's a good baby. Mm, yes. Good, sit. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna walk away from her here. She'll probably get up because we haven't done a whole lot of this, but I don't mind that she gets up to turn around and look at me, but obviously we're working more toward, we don't really want her to do that. End her here. Yes, good girl. That was nothing at all. Nothing at all. Very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah. Oh, those are good scratches. Those are good scratches. Yes. Good. Let's go. Yes. There's a good girl. Oh, you're so goofy. Good. And you're here? Yes. Good girl. Very nice. Good. And you're here? Yes. Good girl. Good job, baby girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Oh, get those good scratches. Get those good scratches. No. Yeah, good girl. Notice that I'm moving away from her as I'm calling her. All right. So here's the deal. If you're, no, good. All I did there was I stepped on the leash. She hit the end of the leash. She sat on her own. Okay. Remember that a lot of times we're actually communicating a lot by, by doing less, all right? So sometimes less is more, especially when you're talking about recall, okay? So sometimes it's really hard to figure out what is the order of operations with recall, okay? Usually, usually, I say the dog's name, I would say Ender here. As soon as the dog looks at me, as soon as they give any sort of attention to me, I'm gonna give them that non-reward marker good and then when they get to me i'm going to say yes and i'm going to pay the dog all right and that payment can come through treat toy or touch all right so that's the order that it should go in a should be the dog's name the the recall word that you choose um, that could be come it could be here i use here um, and then as soon as they start to come towards you, yes, and then you're going to pay the dog. Now, merging that with the e collar remote, while I'm in conditioning, I'll use vibration. And as soon as that dog starts to come toward me, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to release that vibration as I give that yes, okay? Because they're getting the reward partially because I'm releasing the vibration. So a lot of times I'll go ahead and use yes instead of good, even though that good is a, um, yes is a, a rewarded marker, it's a paid marker. Um, their payment is that I let go, all right? So again, she's so tired right now. Good girl, just a very nice short session here. And her here. Yes, good girl. Very nice, good girl. You love those booty pats, huh? Let's go. Good girl. I'm not using any stem or anything. It's just kind of a casual mosey. Come here. Good girl. Very nice. Look at that sweet girl. Can you sit for me? Yeah, very good. Very good. I think a lot of this stuff has to do with connection. Um, the more that you work your dog, the more natural it's gonna come off. Um, obviously, if you're having trouble with just the most basic recall stuff, the most basic positioning stuff, you need to go back and rebuild some of that, all right? The only time when you should be using this for your behaviors is when the dog is already offering the behavior, they're loving the behavior, you've named the behavior, you've done some leash work, some leash pressure um, and correction in regards to the behavior, then you come in and you do a little bit of the e collar conditioning. Um, you, you acclimate the dog first, make sure that they have are comfortable with the equipment being on, make sure that they know how to turn off that stimulation and different types and tactics. So if I, if I want the dog to understand a sit is tapping that electric, a down is holding the electric. A recall would be holding the vibration or speeding up would be tapping the vibration. That's really the only four things that you can do here. You can tap the electric or you can hold it. You can tap the vibration or you can hold it. All right. So those are what I use it for. You can use whatever you want as far as the stimulation and um, simulation types and tactics go. I don't care what you use because that's just what comes easiest to me. And it's really what came most natural to the first 100 dogs that I trained on the e-collar. So um, 
Anyway, if you have questions, please, please text me, shoot me an email, drop a note in the comment so that it can help other people. Um, and then if you guys uh, need a link, if you go to AllegiantK9.com in the tools and equipment section, um, that has affiliate links for all of our stuff on Amazon. All right, guys, I hope all is well, and we will talk to you soon. Again, Matt Burnett with Allegiant K9, talking about e-collar conditioning and the structured walk. We'll talk to you soon.